Hold on to your mug. We're in for a wild night. So each week we talk about a specific deck. This week, Cthulhu brought an odd paladin deck. So I've got it up on the screen here. For the benefit of our audio listeners, I'll read the list real quick. So this is running one copy of Animated Broomstick, two copies of Blessing of Might, one copy of Christology, two copies of Lost in the Jungle, one copy of Never Surrender, two copies of Oh My Yog, two copies of Righteous Cause, two Righteous Protectors, two Tour Guides, two Carnival Barkers, one copy of Divine Favor, two Muster for Battles, one rally, Rallying Blade, one Steward of Darkshire, two Warhorse Trainers, uh, Leroy Jenkins, Lotheb, Lothraxian the Redeemed, two copies of Quartermaster, and on the top end we've got Baku the Moon Eater. So this is an archetype that we saw get a lot of support from the new set. I think we're still experimenting a little bit, but this has really seen a resurgence. Oh my Yog. Uh, so the new the new cards in this deck from the most recent set, we've got Oh my Yog, we've got the Carnival Barker, we've got Lothraxian, and they all seem pretty strong. I, I'm not quite sure because the set has only been out for a few weeks that we haven't fully tested, but it's kind of crazy. Um, I know some people were saying Lothraxian felt a little bit slow, but the idea of having divine shield on your dudes, the rest of the game feels really strong to me. Uh, mm -hmm. the carnival Barker is just nuts. And I think, Oh yeah. Oh my Yog is basically a counter spell, a one mana counter spell in odd paladin. So it, it's pretty crazy. I don't know. Um, Cthulhu, what do you think about this deck? I've been playing this deck uh, quite frequently since the past couple of months. So the additions made by Dark Moon are, are quite incredible, especially Carnival Barker and Oh My Yog. I think these have undoubtedly made it much stronger. Again, I'm running Lothraxian because it's, it, it's it, the idea of having Divine Shields is quite good. Although a lot of times, you know, it's in my hand and I don't get to play it because there's so much... So many other things that I have to do first before I, uh, instead of playing a uh, one Lothraxian, but but it does help. I mean, uh, if you know when turn five or six the opponent clears your board, and if at that point you can get this card down, from that point onwards you can sort of rebuild your board easier because your because your um, recruits stick to the board. Right. Right. I agree. It feels slow. And I agree with you. The tricky part is figuring out when is the optimal time to play it. But when you see an opening, you drop it. And it, while it's, I think, a slow turn, it, it lets you build momentum the rest of the game. One of the things that I like the most about Odd Paladin is its ability to, you know, regain board control just over and over and over. And I think when you're facing off against control decks, they can only clear the board so many times. And so if I'm generating two one ones every single turn, you know, at some point they're going to clear having a, what, what is your take on Oh My Yog? Oh My Yog has been, um, has, has definitely been a much better addition because, because the other opponent has to play sort of suboptimally to find out what secret, you're playing and they have to use a less expensive spell first try and see if it's oh my yog oh my yog has worked out in my favor when when you know uh, people have tried to trigger it with a coin and instead of the coin the spell that ends up coming out is one of the forbidden words forbidden healing or something <laughs> so you know all the mana gets spent <laughs> so oh, even though they yeah. did trigger it with the coin but but they couldn't do anything else that turn. So oh my yog has been pretty good. It makes people very cautious, which is which is good because then they'll be playing suboptimally and mm. I can sit with my board protected. I've seen it go wrong for people pretty much every time except one. I was playing against a paladin on Wednesday night and played a two mana spell. And I, they had a secret up, right? And you have to test for it. And I think this deck now has only been running Never Surrender or Oh My Yog before. Sometimes you run one copy of Competitive Spirit, but I think now we okay. just pull it out. But I played a two mana spell and it turned into 
one of the paladin spells um it turned into the Librum to give my guy plus one plus one, and it actually ran, <laughs> random randomly targeted my minion, which was awesome. But f- you know, for the most part, ninety nine percent of the time, you know, it's basically a one mana counter spell, and it, it really forces them to play suboptimally, which is why we like Secret Mage so much. Right, and and you know things like Hellfire or the five mana Kazakus portion. These things never surrender. Can't stop this because even if you have that secret down your board still gets cleared but this secret stops those sorts of board clears so i think that's a definite advantage nice i like that it's interesting in this list as well like i see a rallying blade and we weren't really playing that as much before but now that there's a greater opportunity for your silver hand recruits to have divine shield i can see that making a lot of sense it does it does i i played rallying blade a couple of months ago, the first time I made an odd paladin deck, and it would always feel like I'm playing it suboptimally because no minions were getting buffed at all. But at this point, there tend to be a lot of divine shield minions. Even if you can, you know, buff one or two minions, it's it's good enough. Well, and the nice thing is, it's a very aggressive deck, and you can still go face with the weapon. I will say, I, I agree. I I see Aramorn in the chat here. And I have to agree with him that Lothraxi and the Redeemed, the animation and the voice line is so cool. It's one of the one of the better ones I've seen from this new set. It's very neat. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, have you um, experimented with any of the other new spells from this set? I believe there's one that could slot into this deck. It felt a little bit slow to me, and I can't remember the name of it anymore, but it's the one that I believe it, it summons three one one silver hand recruits, recruits uh, that is a uh, day of the fair and if you corrupt it with some months five right right you think it's too slow i did i did start out with that it is it is because uh most of the times you have i mean you, you already have hero power and your hero power is getting two recruits down and uh, it, it, you never i never seem to have enough mana to play that three mana card, three mana spell with something else. I mean, playing it with uh, Carnival Barker or Stuart, that sort of didn't happen. So I stopped running it. I suppose we have muster for, muster for battle, which is just better, right? Right. Yeah. And, um, and, and holding it long enough for it to actually get corrupted makes no sense because you... That's uh, you, you tend to not do that in Odd Paladin. If you have any way to rebuild your board, you you take that opportunity. And right. there are so few cards that would corrupt it anyway. I'd have to wait for Lothraxian or Quartermaster or something, and and, and, and and it doesn't make sense. I agree. So, what do you typically keep? Uh, what like what are you looking for in your mulligans here? Well, definitely tow guides, righteous uh, cause. Righteous Protector, if it's like um, Agro Druid or Demon Hunter, because otherwise, you know, whatever you're putting out there is going to die before you can buff them. Uh, I usually also keep Lost in the Jungle. And mm-hmm. if it's if it's a um, Warlock, I like to keep a Never Surrender first. And in the opening hand, I'd keep a Never Surrender over, say, Oh My Yog, because the... Uh, you know, it gets the board to be stickier right at the beginning. Opens I agree. Opens up to less, less well, amounts of defile. I like that this list is running a divine favor as well. I've played against a lot of Odd Paladin over the past week, especially playing as like a Mali Druid or a Warlock where they tend to hold a lot of cards, even the Priest decks do. When you're dumping your hand every turn, playing a divine favor, it's just an instant refill. Draw six cards, draw seven cards. <laughs> for three mana seems great so gross right it's so good when you're playing against things like you know mirror or um, against aggro druid broomstick really helps because if you've got them if you've got a few minions that are buffed with never surrender or carnival barker or or something it you know one broomstick sort of helps you clear the board keep your keep your dudes on board till you can buff them so I've been keeping one broomstick so far. It seems, I don't know, seems like a good idea. It does help clear a lot of things. Or if you need to clear a taunt the very same turn, if you have lethal already, it's just you know one taunt in the way or something. So broomstick does come to your rescue there. 
plus you know this yeah deck used to run faceless corruptor and i think broomstick is doing a good enough job of replacing that five mana thing that makes sense the other card that i see that got removed Oh, uh, Corridor Creeper? Yeah, yeah. I can't ever remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Corridor Creeper we used to run, but then it got nerfed. But a lot of times you could play it for, for free, right? But I think one of the issues that we start getting into with these wild decks now that there's so many expansions out is at some point you have to cut something and the other cards are too good to cut. And a lot of times, where I think, at least from my perspective, rather than looking at power level, we're looking at synergy with the rest of the deck. And so many of these work so well together that you can't cut them. Right, right. And Koido yeah. Creeper doesn't make sense because there's, I mean, what will you remove from this list to put a Creeper in? I mean, if it was still a 5-5. Five, five. I mean, I, I do, if, if anything, I feel like your five mana slot here is a little bit crowded. And like Ben from work is saying, he's not sold on Lothraxian. And I'm kind of in the same boat where I really like the card and I think that it's good for now. It's always a little bit awkward to play, but I feel like it's very powerful. I could see it potentially being cut later. Maybe not. All I've know, all I know is like I've had it played against me and it was not fun. No, every time I see it played against me, I do that kind of deep sigh, like, oh, here we go again. So, <laughs> and time will tell. Well, any time, and we said this on the review show, but I think any time you see a card that says, for the rest of the game, you get X, it's usually pretty good because it's not a, you know, the ability is not reliant on having him on the board. It doesn't matter if it dies. You, you know, you start generating a bunch of Divine Shield Silverhand recruits. And I think that's why we were able to reduce down to one Steward of Darkshire from two. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense to run two stewards anymore if you're running Lothraxian. Right. Uh, so as an aggressive deck, my question is, how does this go up against... Priest. Big Priest, Reno Mage, Reno Warlock, kind of the big, the other kind of tier ones at the moment. Well, um, it's not doing... Uh, very well against big priest because because these days it's not just one turn that you have to get through uh, because if they get the colossus out it's 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 got a death rattle as well and you know once one minion of theirs dies it just comes back twice and then thrice and so on and so on so big priest is usually a problem it, it's great against the mages i have not had too much of a problem against mages with it but uh, Big Priest can be an issue. Renolog has been fine. I mean, Renolog has a lot of board clears. I guess it's just, you know, if you get an explosive hand, if you can get the quest done in the first couple of turns, you can get your board to stick and do, do a lot of early damage. I'm trying to think what else is there to be said about the deck. It seems really strong. I mean, I'm looking forward to playing games with it. It's It's a lot of fun. It's been one of my favorite decks really since... Which would came out? Uh, Armor in chat's asking, do you think an owl would help or some kind of silence? Mm, good question. I guess the question is, you know, in, in a matchup against control deck, like a big priest or a big, you know, a warlock deck like Reno Lock or Cube, is one silence enough? I mean, you really, you want to kill them by like turn five, turn six if that's possible. Right, right. I have been contemplating running a silence, but I don't want to disrupt the synergy that I have going. I don't want to take one of these things out to run a silence. So I'm not sure. I mean, it feels very tempting because getting one Colossus up at turn five is very annoying. But I don't know. I don't think it'll really, really improve those matchups all that drastically. I tend to agree with you. I think what my concern would be in putting in a silence, number one is what would you remove for it? And I, I don't really think that there's anything that you would want to remove. And additionally, like, okay, would help you in that one one matchup, maybe two matchups, but the rest, it would be kind of a dead, a dead card. There's so. something also to be said for sticking to your own game plan, right? When you start teching for everybody else's game plan. You're not sticking to your own. And that can definitely hinder your your climb or whatever you're doing. If you stick to your game plan, you're m probably more likely to succeed. Right. Plus, uh, for draw, this deck just has Christology and Divine Favor. So, uh, so, you know, if you're just basically relying on the one card that comes to your hand every turn, if that 
car turns out to be an owl and you don't really need it at that point you would much rather have some have something that has immediate synergy with what's on board already or you'd like to buff your minions or maybe put out a secret and if you get an owl on that turn it's just sitting there in your hand doing nothing i agree 100 percent. i like it i'm i'm excited to play some games with this and i do think that it's a competitive deck i'm not sure you know big priest is so prevalent on ladder at the moment but then again this deck is so fast that if you can outpace them then that's a good thing I right because it's winning a lot of matchups as well and Mm -hmm. Carnival Barker is is getting a lot of has been doing a lot of work. I mean, every time I have that in my hand at the right moment, it's been a it, it just builds up the board immediately, and it's very difficult for the opponents to remove it. Yeah, no, there's nothing quite like they play tour guide on turn one, and instantly you've got three one ones on turn one. It's like, oh my god, or yeah. or you know, a turn four Carnival Carnival Barker into tour guide because the Carnival Barker. It doesn't just buff. Is it is it only silver hands or is it things with one? No, it buffs everything with one health. So right. it'll buff the righteous protector. It'll buff the tour guides. Yeah, it'll even that's... buff the broomstick. So oh snap! Yeah, what yeah. Is no, buff there's tar creeper. <laughs> Don't put tar creeper in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of about it for this deck, Cthulhu. Do you have any final? like words or anything about the deck that you would recommend any anything that we missed or or any other recommendations no i think we've uh, we've covered it sufficiently i mean it's a simple deck it really plays itself 